Hello everyone, my name is Niv Cohen, and I will present the work, this is my unicorn, Fluffy, personalizing frozen vision language representations. This is a joint work with Rinon Gal, Eli Mirom, Gal Chechik, and Yuval Atzmon, that was done during my internship at NVIDIA. So we want uh, to personalize frozen language representations. We want to take a model, like a clip, and teach it to recognize new objects from a few examples and reason, about, and reason about them in free, in free language. There are two kinds of challenges. One is that we risk forgetting the prior knowledge from pre-training. If we want to take a model vocabulary and enlarge it, we might make it forget concepts it's already learned if we change the weights of the model too much. And another kind of challenge is accessing prior knowledge concurrently with newly learned objects or newly learned concepts. We want to reason about the new concepts that we learn together with the old ones and it, that it learned during pre-training. So for example, this is my toy wagon. This is my personal object and I have a few photos of it. I want to model I want a model to identify the elephant on my toy wagon. Notice that we have another wagon like it, so we must use the elephant concept. But we also have another elephant on another wagon, so we must recognize my wagon. And here it is. Why is this important? We want to leverage the power of pre-trained model of a pre-trained model to reason with new concepts. And in many domains, collecting labels is costly and hard, so we only want to use a few images. Also, most users do not want to do the entire clip training by themselves, also in terms of resources. There are a few applications that can be tackled. One is to teach a robot to bring us our personalized object. We want the robot to bring our cornflakes to us and not some other cornflakes of an, in another box. We want to do personal segmentation, as we showed before, and we might also want to retrieve an image in a personalized way. Let's think about our entire photo album. We may want our picture with a specific item in hand. As a simple baseline, you can think about an adapter approach. An adapter uses some layer on top of clip that adapt it to recognize the new concept. This approach tends to be brittle and fails when the input sentences deviate from the template used for training. This is probably because the adapter overrides the output of the representation of the clip encoder. So the key idea is to represent a new concept as an input to the representation of our text and visual model, such that it can be correctly processed by the frozen model. So we take a visual language model, such as clip, we use it exactly as is, but we insert some token that represent a word that it never learned during training. It's kind of a new word that you invent for our concept. And we have this function f theta, which learned to predict this kind of word. So we have a few examples of a, a woman wearing a skirt, for example, and we want to use F-theta to tokenize this concept of skirt that we never saw before, this specific skirt. Then we can join this concept of my skirt together with a description, such as on the deck with my skirt, and use the clip text encoder as usual. During inference, uh, we can look for an image of standing with my skirt on a stone pathway. We used this uh, concept, we tokenize it according to F theta. We joined it, we join it with the rest of the sentence, and we embed it using clip text encoder. Then using clip image encoder, we embed each of the images and we retrieve the top similar image which supposedly should contain the same skirt. So how do we learn this uh, function f theta? So we begin by taking a few images of a concept, maybe a well-known concept such as a dog, and we embed them using the image encoder. 
Then we take each of the embeddings to a deep set network and predict some token. We join, we join this token with a prompt, such as a photo of a concept, and uh, we encode it using clip text encoder, and now we get a text encoding of the predicted uh, tokenized concept, and we close the loop with a cycle loss. And we aim for the sentence, such as a photo of a concept, to be similar to the input images that describe this concept. And another thing that uh, we can do is to use language in a more sophisticated way. The problem is that we only have some finite amount of concept in that set, such as MS Coco, and we want uh, to train a theta with a larger number of concepts. So, for example, we can take uh, the object dog, and we can switch it with some word that uh, represent a similar uh, concept, such as a poodle. So we take captions that contain the word dog, we insert the word poodle instead, and now we can use the clip text encoder to encode them as if they were images, and that way we can augment our uh, limited number of concepts with a, a large, very large number of concepts that are just concepts that are given in the, in the English la language, and we can treat them as if they were images used during the training of F-Theta. So we want now to learn the personalized concept. We take a few images of our object, a skirt for example, and we embed them using clip image encoder to get uh, the initial uh, token uh, describing the concept using F theta. Yet, we want to do further optimization using the few images of the object that we got. We start by taking the initial token inferred by F theta and joining it with a prompt, such as a photo of the concept, which concept takes the token that was inferred from F theta. We want this prompt em to embedded together with the concept to be as similar as possible to the embedding of the few images that we got. Note that here we optimize directly the values of the token, and uh, we also want to do another thing. We got better performance, not only optimizing for the token to resemble the images, uh, but only uh, being this similar to a more general concept. We don't uh, want our token to represent any skirt. Uh, we want to represent it. We want the token to represent our specific skirt. So we, we minimize the similarity between it and the embedding of some coarse grain sentence, such as a photo of a skirt. So our learn token would represent our object, but not any skirt. So now for data sets. In order to evaluate our tasks, we also construct the two benchmarks based on existing dataset. So first, based on the deep fashion dataset, deep fashion 2 specifically, we used Amazon Mechanical Turk to get captions of many fashion items found in datasets. When we look for uh, fashion items that have, say, 10 examples in different settings, so we have a description such as concept is leaning on a rock or a gazebo roof is behind the concept where concept uh, describe the specific fashion item. And we can use a few images like that to train our encoder and then to evaluate it on sa tasks such as retrieval. Another data set that we used is the YouTube voice data set. Here again, we look for specific objects that appear in many different photos. We take relatively long YouTube videos in which the same specific object appears in many different frames to obtain different images containing the same concept. This dataset also allowed us to build an instant segmentation benchmark, and you're welcome to find more details about it in our paper. So now we want to evaluate our performance for a retrieval. So we use two kinds of metrics. First, uh, recall at five. We use the method as explained 
uh, with uh, some captions such as standing with my favorite skirt on my stone pathway. We replace skirt with the learn concept and we retrieve images that uh, might be or not be the correct image. And in Recollet 5, we retrieve the top five images according to our uh, caption with learned concept and ask whether we, one of these five images is the image that we intended to find. Similarly, we have the MRR, mean reciprocal rank metric. In this metric, we uh, do a similar thing. We try to retrieve an image and we ask which place that it did it get. Was it was the first image to retrieve, the second, the third, and we call this number n, and we take the average of one over n, again to measure the accuracy of our retrieval algorithm. This is a relatively new setting, so uh, for our main result, we compare to the few benchmarks that we found relevant. So we begin by describing a concept-only qu query results. So in concept-only query, we do not use a scene description, such as a skirt concept uh, found next to yellow table, but uh, only the concept itself, such as this is a photo of a skirt slash concept. Uh, and we will detail each one of the benchmark. So we begin by the text-only benchmark. In text-only, we do not use the personalized concept at all. We just use the sentence this is a photo of a skirt, and there are many skirts in the dataset, both the ones that we intend to and others, and even the ones that we intend to may appear in different images. Next, we use an adapter approach. So the adapter uh, adapts clip to recognize the specific object that we look for. And the specific object in this case is a specific skirt, so we replace the sentence, this is a photo of a skirt, with a sentence, this is a photo of a concept skirt, the specific uh, skirt that we learned. Next, uh, we use Kali. So Kali is a recently published work which try to use the adapt in a soft manner and the adapter in a soft manner. And when I say a soft manner, they use some uh, variable to wait between the adapter uh, that was learned and the original uh, clip space. Next, we use the, the next baseline that we compared to here is the average image. So in average image, we take the, say, five uh, images of uh, our specific skirts that were given during training. We embed them, we take the average embedding, and we look for images that are most similarly embedded to the five uh, few shot examples that we got. And you can see that our learn token outperforms on the concept-only query. So here we use, this is a photo of a concept uh, skirt where uh, the concept skirt is the concept that was learned using our method. Now let's move to the more interesting rich query. So in rich query, we also get some sentence describing the scene. So we can say a skirt in a room with a table maybe with a white table or a yellow table to be more specific. So again, we use a similar benchmark. So the, fend, the first benchmark here is the adapter. Uh, and we can see that the adapter does not give very good results uh, with compared, to the, compared to the other methods. This is because the adapter overrides the clip uh, text embedding space and all of the context that we get from the rich query description is lost. Similarly, uh, Kali is also using an adapter. The ability to apply it in a soft manner uh, allow it to be a little bit better. We also have the next baseline, which is Kali text. So in Kali text, we do not use the personalized object, but just use a clip as is. And it is very interesting with comparison to the next based on which is text only. So text only is just uh, taking the scene description with the coarse uh, grained uh, object. So if the object is a skirt, we do not use the special learn token. We just 
enter the sentence a skirt with a yellow table and we can see that this already is uh, very simple baseline is doing much better than Coley because uh, Coley fails to preserve the original clip text embedding space. The last and uh, strongest baseline here is average image plus text. So we take the embedding of the rich query that we got, like this is a skirt with a yellow table. We embed it, we take the five uh, images that we get during a few shots, we embed them as well, and we take the average embedding and look for images that resemble it the most. And we can see that this baseline already utilizes uh, both the the few shot uh, images and the text query in a relatively strong uh, manner. But our method uh, gives better results, so. Uh, we start by describing our method without fine-tuning. Here we just use fData to infer uh, the code. This is the first stage of our inference. And uh, palavra hours is our full method. We first infer a token, and then uh, we do the second stage of uh, optimization on it uh, to get a very strong result with respect to the baselines. We can see that our advantage uh, is preserved for a different number of k's, we call it 1, we call it 5, we call it uh, 10, etc. And there are a few oblations you could uh, find in the paper. So uh, now for the segmentation experiments. So as we saw in the beginning, we want to segment an object, and we do it on the YouTube VOS uh, dataset. So again, uh, we have a uh, the description an elephant on my toy wagon. We learn a concept describing my specific wagon and we segment it. And a few examples. So we look for a bright orange fish with its full back dorsal fin and black tail with white tips visible. And we can see that we are able to identify the correct, fi the correct fish while, while benchmark method cannot. And now some failure case. So many times the scene descriptions contain many objects, uh, such as a concept standing above another tiger. So in this case, the concept is a tiger, but we have another tiger in the image. And uh, the fact that this, our description contain many objects, it can be also a tiger and a frog. It doesn't have to be two tigers, but uh, in some cases, Clip uh, behaves a little bit like a bag of word model, and uh, it is not able to identify the exact relation. So if we have a rich scene with many objects on it, they, we might uh, segment by accident the wrong object or all of them. So for a quantitative uh, result in our uh, segmentation setting, we start by beginning, we begin by setting an IOU threshold. We calculate the rate of samples which obtain it. This is if the threshold is a fair, is a 0.5. We calculate how many, in how many samples did we obtain at least 0.5 IOU. And then we sweep over a range of threshold and we see that our uh, method outperforms a bit about follow-up works. So our work inspired another work by Galet Al, aiming to learn a personalized concept to be used as part of a language and visual model for a generative task. Roy et al. did another work in a similar setting, so, we wa so you might want to check these works as well. So to conclude, we extend the vocabulary of a pre-trained vision and language model with a novel personalized concept. We learn to map a set of images to word embedding using a cycle loss with either image or augmented text. We further tune a word embedding by distinguishing it from a super concept. This is the coarse green concept I mentioned earlier. And during inference, we simply use the word embedding as just another word in the vocabulary of the pre-trained model. So thank you all for listening, and I hope to see you in person.